Like this time six months ago, I, I was working in a kitchen downstairs 48 hours because I live in a pub. We moved forward in the space of, of six months. I've, I'm now able to, to provide for my children and my partner and we've just got a new house which we're moving to the end of this month. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the GG Podcast brought to you by us here at cdkeys.com. Today, we have another wonderful episode for you today, and we are joined by the wonderful, hardest working YouTuber I have ever met, fantastic creator, the lovely Cloud Plays. Cloud, how are you, buddy? Thank you for coming on. Yeah, not too bad. Thank you very much for having me, man. It's yeah, yeah, honor. for sure. So tell me about, firstly, who, tell me about who you are and what you do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, so my real name's Dan. It's a great name. Your name sure is Dan as well? How did I not know this information? <laughs> it <is. laughs> it's so, when um, you meet other yeah. creators, you just don't ever, like, you're just like, oh, what's up, Cloud? What's up, Two Shoes? You never really, yeah. <laughs> no one ever cares to ask. But hey, <laughs> two Dans are better than none. Sorry, please continue. Who, who are 100%, you? 100%. No, 100%. <laughs> what do you do? But yeah, my name's Dan, um, also known as Cloud Place. Um, I am a sole youtuber i um, just recently gone full-time um and i pretty much cover anything gaming that is relevant at that point heavily into the the gaming news side of things um but just of recently tips tricks guides tutorials anything related around the gaming scene is likely to be on my channel at some stage or another i've been in the game now for probably about five six years and it's just uh yeah it's just just something that you just can never imagine to be real but it's been a crazy journey awesome not many people, anyone who's watching this at home, you may not know this, but being a YouTuber uh, requires a lot of work. It's a lot of editing, it's a lot of uh, recording, it's a lot of playing the game and learning all the stuff. And Cloud does this literally better than anyone I think I've ever met. So I hope in today's interview, we're gonna get a massive insight into that. But in order to do that, I wanna bring it back. I wanna go back to the inception of uh, video games in your life, I suppose. So what, what, yeah. what, what got you into games as a kid? As a kid, it was um, probably down to my dad more than anything. Um, I had a, a an old games room that we used to, me and my little brother used to spend a lot of time in. And my, my old man, I remember he bought the uh, bought the first Xbox. Before that point, we weren't really too too big into gaming, to be honest. Uh, we we had like some of the old uh, consoles and stuff like that, so like the old Sega Mega Drive mm -hmm. and, and and some of that stuff that were dotting around. But it wasn't really wasn't really on my radar probably until the original Xbox. And and my old man was it was binging on halo he was yeah, he was yeah. a mad halo head and uh yeah we, we we picked that up quite quickly and it kind of came into fruition quite quick that my, anytime my dad came home to come and play there was there was just no point in trying because me and my brother had controllers in hand already <laughs> so um, uh, yeah and it kind of it kind of went on from there it just kind of motioned through to call of duty the first person shooters held me for a very very long time yeah um, and i think as i kind of got older um my head kind of like revolved around a lot more than just the, the point and shoot aspect and the, the idea of storytelling became probably one of the most uh, interesting concepts to me mm. um, and it kind of it kind of ran from there um, it went into uh, so many different games the hitman series so i was a massive fan of the hitman series uh, the, the idea that you could you could be something that you just you wasn't in real life was yeah. was huge for me um, and during my school days I, w I would say that i probably wasn't the most popular kid in school um, so actually being able to to go into a universe where you could be something which has got 10 times more confidence 10 times more uh, 10 times more about you than what yeah. you actually wear in real life it was just a it was such a, a big influence probably on my teenage years so for sure what is your what is your earliest or fondest gaming memory of, of maybe a game you played like relentlessly as a kid wow um my fondest game in memory and I think this is, I don't even think this has got anything to do with the actual game itself. I think, I think that a lot of gaming is, especially during like the, the multiplayer sort of saga of things, mm. um, was more the experiences that you had with a lot of other people. And for me, Modern Warfare 2 was probably the greatest time period for me. And I think it was where I really started to, to gain that confidence to make friends inside of the gaming world. Yeah. And it was waking up in the morning pretending to be sick from school and staying back for 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 hours upon hours upon hours and just can repeatedly playing these games and i, I think that the, the one thing that i probably have to uh 
to thank for gaming I've obviously other than the fact that i can now make this a full-time thing is the fact that i've probably met some of the the nicest and most amazing people for sure the way. for sure i think people don't like necessarily understand when you when you talk to them about gaming and like a lot of my friends like a lot of my closest friends right currently are people who i've only maybe met once or twice in real life or even never even met in real life and you kind of tell yeah. people like oh my friend uh, tom my friend whoever and they're like oh cool do you hang out with them like on the weekend and you're like no no we just they're in like new zealand we play games together and like pe people like yeah. don't it's so hard for people who aren't in this that that community or in that space to wrap their head around that idea you know and i i yeah, I, I think it's so funny that you brought up uh call of duty modern warfare 2 because i think so many creators and so many people who have stuck with gaming as more than just a hobby kind of credit that game for mm. for a lot of their kind of uh, inspiration as a as a kid even if they're not making content like that necessarily anymore because it was really for me anyway the first time that we started to see youtube videos like commentaries like mm. people like hutch and you know blame truth and uh, and c as these early adapters of like commentary videos with gameplay yeah. you know and that's what made me obsessed with it i was like oh my god i'm gonna go out and buy a dazzle capture card i don't know if you remember those <laughs> <laughs> and you know spend hours trying to like buy all these different wires to make it work and yeah. you know like i think that is like a game that really kind of formed a lot of creators today you know i think i think it's super interesting um yeah definitely it was kind of what brought me into the the, the content creation scene solely mm. I, a lot of me doing this now is and again it's, it sounds a little bit silly when i think about it out loud now but a lot of what i do now is solely revolved around nature yeah um, as a content creator he was a really really young lad back then yeah but was so damn inspiring it is absolutely insane and the idea that that he could do that was kind of like i can do that yeah i'll put that work in and it, it's it's just one of those things and it? now yeah, he's he, a uh, multi-million he dollar him. business owner <laughs> i know right yeah <laughs> look thought? at me now mom <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> yeah for sure um right let's talk about uh, the present right uh the mm. the what are the best two games in your opinion of the last five years over the last five years mm. wow um i spent a lot of time inside of destiny destiny was one of those i lost a lot of time inside of that game uh, i got really hooked in on it um so so probably destiny to be fair i think it was a it was a really good time consumption game um yeah it, it, for me it kind of lost lost traction in destiny 2 but the original destiny itself was uh was absolutely spectacular but um elden ring Dude, I know it's only just released, but Dude, I think it's so good. it's been one of those games that's just just sucked millions of people into this to this universe that just just keeps going and going and going, and they've done such a good job of being able to portray that. Absolutely, and I think that like it's made like I've always been a Souls uh, Souls like game fan or Soulsborne mm -hmm. fan. You know, I've played through all the Dark Souls, Bloodborne, Demon Souls, all those games. They're some of my favorite games, and I feel like because of the success of Elden Ring, it's brought such an attention that, you know, that not that the, this genre never had attention, it, it, it had its yeah. attention, it's had its time in the, in the spotlight for sure, but it's brought a much wider audience into the, into the category and into the genre. But what I find is so funny is that this argument where people are like, it should have an easy mode, you know? <laughs> it, 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 and it's like, no, it shouldn't. You just, you have to understand the games are meant to be this hard. They are meant to punish you. They're meant to break, bring you to the point of breaking, you know? And yeah. it's like, I saw a really good argument on Reddit where it was like, that's like saying, oh, well, I don't want to play this horror game because it's too scary. There should be a, a, a not scary <laughs> option, you know? And it's like, yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't work that way, you know? But I do think that like, it's, it's, it's just such a, a game that you can play for, 100 plus hours and barely scratch the surface of most of the content and it's been such oh, an amazing game 100%. for your content as well well i'm i'm 300 hours in now wow um and i am still finding new things every single day i've gone through um i'm on my second run through of new game plus and it just it it just opens up different doors every single time I log on and it's it's absolutely mental for me when you get those sort of like those hidden gems that that just pop up out of nowhere this will be a game which completely changes the whole aspect of open world games in my personal opinion for sure so like you know you've you, you you're making currently on your YouTube channel I've watched your channel go from I think around 22 sub 22,000 subscribers up to now 37 plus I think 37,000 plus subscribers yep. in the space of the launch period of Elden Ring. 
take us yeah. take me through how you how you did that like how did you capitalize on it how did you find the content to make for this game because you are one of the best people doing it i think right now no oh, thank you man that means a lot that means a lot um i think that i kind of made a decision probably around six months ago um because i've always i've always been one of those which i solely believe that hard work will generate success and that is yeah. something that that has been ingrained in me for quite some time. So I've always put a lot of work into it, but I kind of got to that point six months ago where I was like, I'm putting a lot of work in it and the progression is really, really slow. So during the next six months, I am just going to say yes to anything that comes my way. Now, Elden Ring wasn't on my radar until a week before it actually launched. It wasn't one of the games that I generally play. It wasn't something that I was generally drawn towards or anything like that. Mm. It was, um, I probably, I think I played Demon's Souls other than that i had never touched a souls game before this point and i thought okay right that's fine it, this is against games highly anticipated the metacritics came out and everything was like the ratings were through the roof yeah and i thought right okay so i just picked it up and that was that from that point it was all down to a basis of whether you understand how youtube works as a platform and especially in the gaming scene you've got to imagine that if you're uploading content inside of one of the biggest games in the last year year and a half there are going to be tens of thousands of people that are trying to do the exact same thing so i kind of revolved it around a oversaturation method where i kind of went right okay any weapon that i find that is genuinely good and that i know that i will heavily test out for maybe two or three hours on different bosses i will keep rinsing and repeating yeah and if it works and it it works really well the location guides start coming out the update patches they go out the uh the quest lines and how to run through those quest lines yeah. they go out there farming methods and it just kind of anything that i could grip my hands on it was yes i'm gonna do that yes i'm gonna do that yeah. and it was never a question of of, of whether i I'm doing the right thing. Yeah. And it was just a, I made content. I watched that content back. I enjoyed that content. And th th what I had actually created mm. was something that would help me if yeah. I was somebody who wasn't in, used to that sort of game style. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted to revolve everything around, a, a, a sort of like a guidance. Yeah, for sure. Um, around the game and, and be able to actually help players who weren't used to it. And I'm so I'm so happy you made that point about like you watch your content back, and that's this is something that yeah. I, I I always say to creators is like, if you can't watch your own content back and enjoy it genuinely, how mm. do you expect anyone else to? You know, and, and and I think you have to be you, you have to be your own critic. You have to be your own hardest critic. And a lot of streamers and, and a lot of YouTubers that I would talk to are like, oh, I don't like the sound of my own voice, and I don't like this, and I don't like that. It's like, just push past it. You know, you have to find a way yeah. to be able to critique yourself. You watching your own content, and if you're bored watching your own content, you know, then you got to change yeah. something. So I mean, I, I'm really glad that you you said that, and you know. I mentioned at the start of this video that you are one of the hardest working YouTubers I've ever I've ever seen, and that's true. You know, you put out three plus videos a day sometimes, and I and you to know. To be fair, that's not even all of the ones that I make. So, like I state, when I when I watch my videos back, if I if I don't like that content, it doesn't go out. Yeah. So I I do lose quite a bit of content on that basis, but it's a it's a morning till night thing, and it's one of those things that it's a it's not a it's not something you can just jump into as a job and if it's something that you genuinely want to make a career we're not in like 2004 anymore you can't just do it for the love of it as much as i would love for that to be the case you can't do that anymore yeah. and you have to look at things on a strategic level and it, if if someone's going to put in 10 hours of work and make two videos a day i'm gonna put in 15 hours of work and put four out yeah uh, it's, it's always uh, i'm always on that next level of trying to make sure that i'm working harder than the last person that i've spoken to 100 percent, absolutely so when you're not working uh what is the what what type of games do you like to to play to wind down or or when you're not trying to make a video you just want to have a bit of you time i am um, if you want my honest opinion and this is going to come across like relatively badly i guess but i am so dedicated to wanting to make something out of this yeah i've got i've got five kids it's, yeah. a, it's a lot of kids but i've got five kids and I, it, the only thing that i ever think of is making sure that by the end of whatever i'm doing they're proud of me so yeah. for me it's a basis of my downtime isn't even revolved around gaming anymore yeah um and there's not a lot of time but anything that i do which is revolved around gaming has some sort of motive yeah 
um, whether it's streaming and that's the reason why I'm playing the game or whether it's uh, I'll sit down at night and I'll go right okay I've got six hours and I need to play a game to to find this item or to find that item everything that I kind of do within the gaming scene now has kind of become work yeah do you do you like that aspect or do you wish you kind of did have that time to maybe just play this game that you you might be interested in that came out or but you don't want yeah. to because you know maybe you wouldn't make content around it but you just wouldn't mind playing it you know does that does, th do you wish I you had more of that sometimes yeah massively massively and i think that sometimes you take something that you absolutely adore yeah. and something that is your hobby and you did for hundreds or thousands of hours as a teenager with no sort of like motive behind it and it's now got a motive yeah and i think it kind of takes away a different aspect of things um but a hundred percent and this is for me it's all a means to an end and once i'm at a point within my youtube quote unquote career where i can be able to have somebody help me along that process yeah. then i can kind of go right okay well i can do one of these and then somebody can help me along that line yeah for sure and maybe edit a second one and yeah. that gives me the time to be able to turn the camera on stream with some people be able to move more into the live streaming service in it and play games that i want to play because i've got a back catalog which i've just never touched and i think that's kind of like the only downside to being able to 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 dedicate your time so much to to the work aspect of it i think yeah no for sure i completely agree um what the, the gaming the gaming industry as a whole right now right mm. what do you like about it what do you not like about it okay so i am quite an opinionated person i can't lie <laughs> here and we go some of my videos <laughs> we popped are, <laughs> <a bear. laughs> so, <laughs> some of my videos are quite difficult to understand sometimes because i'm i'm 100 percent one of those people that i solely believe that that the internet is is not what should be completely opinion based and that's 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 how the internet works nine times out of ten um obviously with the way that that, that the internet's gone on start of youtube and stuff like that you find that there's a lot less opinion based and a lot more of a, of a motive behind the way that people talk about things but i think that the gaming industry as of right now is in i wouldn't say a spot of trouble but is very uh, weak on one side and i think this is where we're kind of seeing the repercussions of the, the most recent pandemic mm. and majority of the games that have been released over maybe the last year two years have all been made where people have kind of just tried to do the best that they can when they're in the office or being at home or whatever um, and i think that's why elden ring for me was quite a breath of fresh air because i think that the, the gaming scene right now is is confusing I think February we had a massive, massive time period where we had the likes of Horizon that was launching, we had Elden Ring that was coming out, Tiny Tina's came out the month afterwards. But then when we look at maybe the next couple of months, it does seem like we are sitting in a bit of a lull period yeah. uh, where gaming is is becoming a bit of a more of a, a difficulty to actually uh, appreciate maybe the larger um, development teams per se. Yeah, for sure. No, I, I think I think you're so right. Um, is there more kind of bringing it back to maybe your community and 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 your mm -hmm. your 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 chat or for example if you're streaming? Yeah. Is there a particularly fond memory or a particularly maybe funny memory that you have with your that that you maybe spent with your community or had with your community? Maybe it was in the comment section. Maybe it was live or something you did in a video that was re received in a, a certain way. Talk me through that yeah i there's always every time somebody speaks about this there's one moment in time that always jumps out to me and i i really wish it was a funny moment but it wasn't it was more one of those heart-wrenching sort of like it got you quite got you quite not like emotional but mm. you, it was an ah moment to say the least but when we was in uh, in destiny i was i used to be a speedrunner for the raid system and me and my team used to go in for every raid race and all of that sort of stuff yep. we would we go against the best at points we were seconds behind tifu at being the last raid wow. um during the destiny one time yeah um and um we used to do uh, what back then was called raid carries where we would bring in subscribers that were from the channel and we would help them in the hardest content in the game so that they could receive some of the best equipment and and uh I never forget we had one one of the subscribers that had been subscribed for I think they said it was around two to three years and they were only nine years old. No way. 
they were nine years old and this little this this little high-pitched nine-year-old boy had never heard such an exciting point as to when he came into the chat and we said right pick a piece of content and we're going to take you through the entire thing Aww. and i've never seen it never heard sorry such a such a level of excitement in all of my life as to when that little nine-year-old boy completed the hardest thing ever and had literally dropped his headset to go and tell his mum <laughs> that, yeah. that, that he'd completed that raid with one of the youtubers that he watches and i think for me that was kind of that was that was where the 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 real start was for right okay yeah, my content needs to help people yeah whether it saves people money for a bad game that is is not doing well through a game review or whether it's 20 30 guides in one week to get through the best loot in the game to save people the time and show them how to get it and i think that was where that that, that for me was where the, the wanting to help my community really sure. started to evolve yeah no i you're so correct because like i mean i always say it you know as a streamer you know it's if you were to think back on the best moments it's not necessarily like oh you did, i had this stream where i had a you know crazy high viewership or i got a load mm -hmm. of subscribers or a load of new followers or or x or yeah. y or z thing those are all fantastic don't get me wrong but it's the messages that you get maybe in chat of somebody being like hey i've been having a bad day you yeah. watching this made me smile or like somebody's super excited to watch you and they see that in chat like oh i've been waiting for you to go live and those are the kind of messages or those are kind of the moments that you kind of say right well this is why i do this no matter how sleep deprived you might be or no matter how you know you you you've been sitting down for 15 hours you get a message like that you're re-energized and it's awesome you know? Yeah, hundred percent. I'm I'm a massive believer in in the whole scheme of motivation. I'm not gonna. I am one of those sad people that that will maybe watch four or five a week of those motivational videos yeah, yeah. to kind Stop of to keep me going. Stop making excuses. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little, yeah, a little bit like that. Yeah, and I, and I think that sometimes when you are in the hot seat mm. and you're making the content and you're editing the videos, you you know full well that you're just a normal guy. And I think sometimes you forget sometimes the impact that you can have on an individual person or a yeah. group of people or, 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 or even thousands at times. And I think that when you see those messages come through, you go, oh, I'm going to put another hour in. Do you know what I mean? And that, that for me kind of really solidifies the reason as to why I do it. Obviously, I want to make it a career. Anyone who's in the game wants to make it a career. It's the, the number one dream job for most teenage boys nowadays. Mm. And I think that once you kind of like start seeing that you are impacting people on a positive note it really really changes the way that you do it for sure for sure look into the future what do you want wow. from your channel in five years time where do you see yourself in five years in five years time and and this this will you know answering this question will either give get you this job or not you know like this is the interview i hope you I hope you knew that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, an interview yeah. question like where do you see yourself in five years well talk me through your five-year plan yeah five years i am I am not sure. I I don't I know this is probably a bit of a cop out answer if you want my honest opinion, but I very much kind of live for the moment. Yeah. And I very much strive towards the short term goals so that I can achieve those long term goals. Yeah. And I think at the moment my, my number one goal is to hit a hundred thousand subscribers. So I can hang that plaque up on my wall. That has been the dream since the day that the Cloud Plays channel ever started. It was nothing to do with the career originally. It was nothing to do with the money at all. It was that that plaque that you can hang up in the background of your camera, which says, congratulations, you've impacted 100,000 people's lives. That's insane for me. And I think in five years time, if I have not surpassed that, then I need to rethink my career. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, I mean, if you keep going the way that you're going, I mean, I think by yeah. the time this 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 uh, podcast gets released, you could be there, if not extremely close. So, you know, yeah. I think that's yeah. absolutely... It's... I think I like that idea of, you know, instead of having these massive goals of like, oh, yeah, in five years, I want to have, you know, a, a mansion and, and a whole team of people like it's it's like you know yeah cool but you could nothing stopping that but at the same time like yeah. setting like these goals that you 
are in your crosshairs that are that are absolutely achievable and 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 when you get them it just again it's such a reinvigorating thing of like all right nailed that hit me up at five hundred thousand. you know that kind of way like yeah and i think it's i think it's really i think it's really strange actually because going into this line of work you don't really ever know what's around the corner mm. and you can set these goals and i think like every other content creator on the planet we come to new year's eve and we get that tweet ready where we post up the goals that we want by the end of the next year yeah and we we we, we propose a load of numbers that that kind of uh, bring a bit of a um a motivational push for the next 12 months of, of your content creation mm. and i think that it's so you can't judge anything like this time six months ago i i was working in a kitchen downstairs 48 hours because i live in a pub so i was working in the kitchen of the pub 48 hours i was then spending another 30 36 hours upstairs plowing through content and making sure i could push myself yeah and we we move we move forward in the space of of six months I've, i'm now able to to provide for my children and my partner and we've just got a new house which we're moving into at the end of this month congratulations like literally 12 days so, and this is this is all down to to what we're doing so so let so let me just backtrack for a sec okay so you are a full-time youtuber okay yes you you, you make videos for your job mm -hmm. and you live in a pub can mm -hmm. we trade lives? <laughs> <laughs> the novel he wears off pretty quick. <laughs> I don't. I think. I, I don't think I'd last for. I don't think I'd get any work done if I lived in a pub. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It yeah. started. It, yeah. At the beginning, it was very much an exciting thing. Yeah. But I think. Uh, yeah, it's definitely changed. I mean, I don't drink anymore, like yeah, at yeah. all. I don't really even go out or anything. I don't, it's. I think it's kind of when you make something twenty four seven it very much drains out quite quickly. So yeah, the idea sure. of the pub was amazing at the beginning and it was so damn exciting yeah. and we had so much fun. But yeah. Um, <laughs> what did they say in Lord of the Rings? They say the closer you are to danger, the further you are from harm. So <laughs> yeah, I think that, <laughs> yes. you know, there you go. Uh, all right. So back to kind of gaming, what, what, what games are you most looking forward or game or games are you most looking forward to playing and maybe making some content about uh, that is that's kind of down the line? Mm, November time, Hogwarts Legacy. Oh, can't lie, looks that so one's good. got me gripped, and I can't really understand why. I am a bit of a Hogwarts fan. My kids absolutely love it. I'm a little bit of a of a Harry Potter fan, but there's something about it that's just got me got me well hooked. It, it I, you know what it is for me. It, re, it, it seems Souls like. I don't know why, mm, but it, it, it yeah. does. It seems like just when I was looking at that gameplay trailer. Uh, and the kind of the rolling and the kind of dodging and stuff, I kind of was looking mm -hmm. at and going, okay, <laughs> you, you, you had yeah. my uh, curiosity. Now you have my attention, you know? So hell yeah, that's uh, it, I can't wait to play it as well, for sure. Yeah, it looks really exciting. I think a lot of the concept arts have definitely uh, boosted my excitement. And when we got that gameplay trailer, it was like a whole, it was, I don't know. I, you know, when you kind of like, you see a game and you're like, I need that to come out now. Mm. Like I need it next month. This needs to be out on, on, on the store for me to purchase <laughs> from, from CD keys. <laughs> <laughs> good, good job. And, and, it, <laughs> and it needs to be there. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, November time. That's, that's the one I'm really, really waiting on. Hell yeah. I, I think I'm, I think I'm on board with you with that one as well. Mm. Um, so one of the, one of the last things I'd like to, to ask you, you are, uh, a father of five, all right? a, yeah. a, 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 hu a husband or a partner, full-time YouTuber, all those mm -hmm. kind of things. Talk me through your day real quick. What does your day look like? Um, it's, it's difficult. It is difficult. I can't lie. Um, I run off of very little sleep, um, very, very little sleep. And I think that kind of, you, when you do this line of work and you work in the whole content creation side of things, yeah. you you have to make a lot of sacrifices. Now, for me, um, my children and my partner are my in, entire world, and that's not something that I'm ever going to sacrifice on this earth. Um, so for me, I wake up at six thirty in the morning. Yep. I get my kids ready for school. I spend some time with them before they go to school, get them sorted. And then I will probably go and get my coffee, go and sit down at the desk, go through all of like my emails and stuff like that. The boring stuff that people don't see, where I send maybe 20, 30 emails a day 
reaching out to different people on the basis of a potential yes for something yeah. or other that, that I'm working on at that point. Um, and then the, the that's where the grind just begins. It doesn't it doesn't stop from that point. It kind of just goes just goes from there. The game, the PlayStation Five will get turned on, or the Xbox will get turned on, or or we'll go into log into Steam and we just start plucking away. Especially with Elden Ring, it's been a lot easier to really create that content because, like you know, it's the whole game is broken down into segments that you yeah. slowly unlock. So it would be I would pick a segment of that game, and for the next three hours, I would exhaust every inch of that map, and I would collect clips and um, long form videos after that point uh, i think a lot of a youtubers uh, the youtubers uh, job line is is not actually gaming oddly enough oh yeah and it's 10 percent of what we do crazy. if even if even mm, yeah. yeah so then maybe for the next five five hours i will sit there and i will edit and edit and edit and generate thumbnails and make more thumbnails and refine the video after i've made the fun now and then i will probably just take a break and then I go again. Yep. And that will continue five days a week until maybe 11 o'clock at night, maybe midnight. So the hours that get put into it a day are probably unfathomable to a lot of people. Yep. Um, but I think the, the idea of making a dream a reality is enough to kind of keep me going. And I've, I've just made a recent purchase of, a, of an electric desk so I can stand up after a couple of oh, hours. Oh, man, which... next on my list for sure. Yeah. Standing desk. Because it, it is a drain on your back, bro. Oh, man, it? like, I, yeah, I, I literally have been talking about this for, for, for months, being like, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. But the one that I want is the one, this, this Ikea one, but it is, it's out of stock every time and like oh, it was no. I, it was like in stock about two weeks ago and i was like i'm gonna do it and i checked my bank account and i was like oh okay, okay i get paid tomorrow i'll wait till tomorrow <laughs> yeah. get paid go on to get it out of stock hasn't come back in that was two months ago <laughs> no. i know i'll get there but uh yeah amazing dude amazing to hear kind of the the work and and actually kind of a little bit behind the veil and i hope uh anyone who's maybe listening to this who you know you're thinking of being a content creator like cloud and me will, will tell you best job in the world but you know you got to put those hours in and 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 if it, you know it takes the time yeah it, it takes a massive amount of time and i always compare it to to a, a bit of a metaphor of it oh, i guess i don't really know if that's the right word not the most intelligent guy ever but irrelevant <laughs> i would always compare it to the basis of for somebody who aspires to be a doctor or for somebody who aspires to be a lawyer they will put in four five six years to get their degree, hmm. to get the experience, to get uh, to get the knowledge behind that job role before they ever achieve that job role. Yeah. Now, a lot of people seem to think that obviously with the whole YouTube game or the streaming game, which after watching your journey, I know is a, is a blast, but it's a grind at the same time, yeah. is, is, is one of those where you can't just achieve that in five months. You can't just achieve that in six months. You, sometimes you can't even just achieve it in a year. Mm you've got to put that time in and if, if you if it takes five six years to to become a doctor and get that dream job with the dream salary there is no difference to to the youtube game you just have to dedicate yourself because nobody's going to push you yeah for sure that is it like there's nobody knocking on your door you know shouting at you if you're late for work in the morning there's nobody yeah. you know forcing you to put videos out there's no deadlines there's no quotas it's just what you want to do and you know that's that's what a lot of people kind of don't get sometimes but what I, to, to finish us off here, I want to do a little bit of a this or that with you, okay? I'm going to give you two okay. things, and you're going to tell me which one you want. That's, just, that's it. It's pretty simple. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fine, yeah. All right. Uh, PlayStation or Xbox? PlayStation. Zelda or Mario? Zelda. Elden Ring or Destiny? Elden Ring. <laughs> one million subs or a team of employees to work for you? One million subs. A night's sleep or six hours to play whatever games you want? Six hours to play whatever games you want. <laughs> there you go. There's a man who knows what he wants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, amazing, man, yeah. amazing. Before I let you go, I want to close out the podcast by asking you uh, to leave us with a motivational quote or something to motivate us. Be it a creator, be it somebody listening to this on their way to work in the morning, be it uh, somebody sitting there playing Elden Ring while they're listening to this in the background. Give us a, a, a little bit of a, a good send off. Yeah, 100%. Uh, it's, it's probably one of my favorite sayings ever. I actually found out it didn't originate from Kung Fu Panda, although this is where I found it. But tomorrow is a mystery. 
Yesterday is the history, and today is a gift, which is why they call it the present. So don't abuse it. Amazing. Cloud Blaze, thank you so much for chatting with us here at cdkeys.com. Let the people know Thanks where so they much. can find you and uh, how they can check you out. Absolutely. My name is Cloud Plays. I am solely running on YouTube at this moment in time, although Twitch is due to come in maybe the next couple of months or so. So you can find me on YouTube at Cloud Space Plays, or you can find me on Twitch at Cloud Plays underscore YT. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time, buddy. Thank you very much for having me, man. It's a pleasure. And if you want to check out any of the titles that me and Cloud may have talked about in today's video, you can find it on cdkeys.com where we have a plethora, hundreds, if not thousands of games for you to choose from at amazing prices or memberships or anything like that you might need. So enjoy that and happy gaming. Everybody, if you enjoyed this episode of the GG Podcast, make sure you follow us, leave us a like, a subscription, whatever you feel like we deserve. And we will see you in another episode next time. Have an amazing day and we'll catch you soon. Peace out. Much love. Bye-bye.